Welcome to my channel, Russian History with Dr. Borovkin, playlist Russia under the Communist Regime. Last time we discussed the seizure of power in Petrograd and how the Bolsheviks came to power in what is normally known as the October Revolution. Today I'd like to focus on the elections to the Constituent Assembly. Uh, very few people know that Constituent Assembly was a rather important institution. It was supposed to form the next Russian government. It was supposed to be uh, to formulate the nature of political system in Russia. And what's most important is that the Bolsheviks, when they seized power, called their government provisional government of workers and peasants until the convocation of the Constituent Assembly. So it was a general expectation that the Bolsheviks party, with this uh, public image of a most revolutionary party uh, that, was st that stood for land, peace uh, and bread and the reform, would be the one that would actually say what it meant, that has guaranteed the elections to the Constituent Assembly and honor its results. This is why it's very important to see who voted which way and what were the political consequences of the fact that the Bolsheviks disbanded the Constituent Assembly. Now, another important aspect of the Constituent Assembly is that it was the first time in the 20th century that Russia actually had free and fair elections all over the huge country, all over the huge empire, except for the territories that were occupied by the Germans, which is parts of Ukraine, parts of Belarus, and the, the Baltic provinces. Uh, now, uh, the result of the elections we will analyze later, but let's just go through the history of how exactly and what was going on. The elections started on the 14th of uh, November, old style, which makes it 28th of November, new style. Uh, and they were going for about a week in different parts of the country. And they were then calculating and tabulating the results. So probably somewhere by the middle of uh, December, it was fairly clear who the winner was. And the final results were somewhere by the time of Christmas. Uh, and the Constituent Assembly actually opened on the uh, 5th of January. Now, the elections were going on on the basis of... Um, electoral lists of party of different political parties. So as you will see in the photographs presented here, uh, each political party would have a list and there would be posters all over cities uh, that would say vote for list number four, vote for list number 10. They were all political parties were represented, uh, including the monarchist party, including the black hundreds party, including the Jewish political parties. Uh, they were really fairly a large spectrum of political parties. The Bolsheviks did harass those that they called monarchists and those that they called bourgeoisie. Uh, so there were already closures of newspapers, uh, and but, but still very little because they really didn't have time. They established control over Moscow just one week before the elections uh, to the Constituent Assembly. So they really had no time to uh, apply force in any meaningful way. And one could generally say that the election were uh, pretty much free and fair. Now, the, uh, the party list is an interesting uh, way it, it was done. So the way it worked is like this. You have a party list and then a certain number of people would vote for a certain party list. And then the names of the list uh, would be in the, a certain order, which, which actually means that those who are at the top of the list would get elected, uh, and the higher on the list you are, the uh, the more chances are that you would go through. And then proportionately further down the list, there wouldn't be enough votes to uh, guarantee the election of such and such a person, and therefore uh, they would not go through. That system pretty much guaranteed that the party leaders uh, of of, uh, of certain parties would go through because they would put themselves at the top of the list and of course they would put themselves in the provinces where they knew they were uh, doing very well and they were popular and in that sense they could go through. Oliver Radke, uh, my former colleague, wrote a great book, Russia Goes to the Poles, where he uh, spent 300 uh, pages or more analyzing in great detail 
uh, province by province, how the elections were going on, where they were going on, who won and why, etc., etc. So it's, it's a huge book, and uh, we can't go over it in huge detail here, but there are some important things uh, that need to be said. Uh, but before we go to the analysis of the results, let's just see what happened to the Constituent Assembly itself. Uh, as I said before, on the 5th of January, it convened. The chairman was Viktor Chernov, who was the Minister of the Provisional Government and who was the leader of the agrarian reform uh, in the uh, Socialist Revolutionary Party. Uh, the proceedings went on for about a whole day and they were trying to define, you know, the nature of political government. Russia was already declared a republic. In many ways, it was a continuation of 1917. Uh, the, uh, who they were trying to figure out whether it's going to be a parliamentary republic, which ministry would be uh, accountable to the Duma, how the Duma, the Russian parliament, uh, how it would be organized, which provinces which have on the what basis uh, pretty much similar to the way it was universal suffrage uh, elections. Uh, a big issue was to resolve the uh, the nationalities and the issue of autonomy, etc., etc. But if things were going the way they were going, Russia would have had a, a government and a, a Duma, a Duma the, the parliament, and the government would have been a parliamentary republic, and most likely Viktor Chernov would have been elected the prime minister. Uh, so in that sense, it would have been a continuation of the political system established in 1917. However, at the end of the day, uh, a sailor, a Bolshevik, Zelizniak, came over to Chernov and said the guards are tired, the, his famous phrase, and they were uh, not allowed to convene. The next day, there was a demonstration in favor of the Constituent Assembly, and for the first time, the Bolsheviks opened fire on the demonstration, and there were people wounded and kids, kids killed. So, uh, this is a, for the record, this is the third time that the Bolsheviks applied force with casualties, with people being killed. Uh, just for the record, the first time it was uh, 27th, 29th of October in uh, Petrograd when the Yunkera, as they were called, the, uh, the cadets of the military schools, the young boys, 15, 16, uh, thought they were doing their duty and they decided to defend the provisional government, which was being overthrown by the Bolsheviks, and they were massacred. They were torn to pieces and executed and um, bayoneted and uh, killed and shot and so forth. The second time was, of course, in Moscow when the battles were going on for about a, a week. And again, they were, they were people who were in uniform, who were soldiers, and who felt they were performing their duty in defense of the legitimate government of the provisional government. So the first two times was a violence inflicted on those who defended the provisional government. Now, the Bolsheviks opened fire on a peaceful demonstration, the civilians, who simply exercised their right of a street march in defense of something that's totally legitimate, uh, elected representatives of the people, and they shot it. Uh, the, uh, the, the suppression of the Constituent Assembly uh, and the execution of uh, its defenders, those who, who walked on the streets, is a very important moment in the history of Russia because uh, this is the beginning of uh, a civil war. Uh, the real civil war is going to start several months from now, but, but listen, if you are a, a, vi a winner in a party that won elections and they disband the assembly, the legitimate assembly, where you have a majority, what other choice do you have rather than to resist? So it was clear uh, on the next day that it was only a matter of time when the socialist revolutionaries uh, and other political parties who felt that, they, that the Bolsheviks usurped their power, uh, it was only a matter of time before they would uh, resort to uh, uh, defense of their rights by whatever means available, including armed forces. So, uh, let's get back now to the uh, returns of the Constituent Assembly. As I mentioned before, it was absolutely clear that the absolute winner were the party of socialist revolutionaries. It was not accidental. Uh, I mentioned before in the previous videos, in 1917, uh, at the height of the Bolshevik success, there were 250,000 Bolsheviks and there was one, one million members of the 
uh, Socialist Revolutionary Party. They had their membership in every province. In, they built up that membership over decades of hard work among the peasants. So this is a party of peasants, uh, a party of uh, rural intelligentsia. They had presence everywhere, especially in agricultural provinces, and it's no wonder that they won. 40%, uh, the, largest, uh, the largest delegation of all political parties, including they did very well in Ukraine, where Ukrainian socialist revolutionaries also won. Uh, in Georgia, the Russian Social Democrats, Mensheviks won. Uh, in uh, uh, Muslim areas, there were a lot of votes cast, about a million for uh, the Muslim candidates. And Jewish uh, vote parties did fairly well too. So there was a kind of a great diversity of votes, but the biggest one went to the social to the uh, SRs. Now the Bolsheviks, they got 25 percent of the vote. Uh, and uh, that sounds like a pretty big number, but if you look at where they had come from, uh, they had come from almost in the largest number from the uh, army. And not from all of the army, but from the uh, western, northeast, northwestern front, uh, which is the one that is closest to Petrograd, and this, and especially the sailors. In some uh, areas, there were 90% of army vote went to the Bolsheviks. Now, uh, I have to be very precise here. When I say that, that soldiers voted for the Bolsheviks, I want to be very clear. They did not vote for the Red Terror. They did not vote for the construction of socialism, for the proletarian dictatorship, and for any of the things that the Bolsheviks were going to do. They voted for peace, because that was the number one on their agenda. They wanted peace now uh, and a land reform. And so when the Bolsheviks said they were going to do this, this is what what this vote was for. Uh, also, unqualified and very poor uh, layers of working class voted for them too, uh, but the uh, educated uh, working class, the qualified workers, the printers, the railroaders and others, they stayed with the Mensheviks. Moreover, Menshevik organizations, and I show in my book, did expand in this time. So it was a defeat of the Menshevik party world in terms of the all of Russia, but not in terms of the working class. The majority of qualified workers workers and those who had been workers uh, for years earlier, not the new arrivals, they stayed with the Mensheviks. Uh, so uh, cadets were the third party. They were um, in all of Russia. They, of course, was only less than 10 percent. But that's not surprising because they are a party of the educated society of those who were wore a suit and coat and tie. Uh, they were people who were professionals, uh, lawyers and doctors and businessmen, uh, and they were largely in cities. So obviously in cities they got pretty well. They got 25 percent of the vote, which was bigger than other political parties. In some cases they would have a majority, uh, which would be reflected in the Dumas of the cities. But in all of Russia they of course could not count on such success and only got about uh, less than 10 percent. Uh, so uh, the overall picture of uh, elections shows First of all, that Russia had a great exercise in democracy, that Russians knew what they were doing. They knew they were electing a parliament. It showed tremendous participation uh, in terms of uh, civil consciousness that already existed. Uh, the, the peasants, uh, the minorities, the Muslims, the Jews, uh, national minorities in Ukrainians and Georgians, everybody participated. And uh, Russian history would have been different if indeed uh, the constitutional process would have continued uh, and if Russia could have uh, entered this new period of its history with a legitimate government and with the Duma. But that was not to be for the rest of the most of the 20th century. The Bolsheviks preferred to fight it out. Uh, they were not going to relinquish power they seized and the logic of events was that they were going to go and uh, fight for it in a civil war. So. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the Soviet system of government as it was shaping after the defeat of the Constituent Assembly. But in the meantime, uh, I will stop and uh, uh, please subscribe to my uh, videos that are forthcoming and there'll be many more. Uh, and uh, until next time, bye.